alaikum. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Am I loud? Yes, thank you. Sixteen and twenty-one for Isa Karitan. I'll go back to see him. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nasra Ismail. I'm the director of the Somalia NGO Consortium, and I welcome you on behalf of the World Humanitarian Action Forum, on behalf of the Somali government, on behalf of the NGOs in the room. We welcome you to a follow-up workshop on localization. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you so much for our guests who have really made it very, very easy for us to welcome all of you from your very uh, tough, tough schedule. So welcome to everybody, and good morning. The structure of today, I will be facilitating this workshop. Uh, we have two parts. We have one session here today to set the uh, to set the scene for us on this localization. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm sure the NGO consortium and our work together as NGOs have been some of the most important and leading work uh, on this topic, not only for the country and the region, but really uh, in the last few years for the globe. Um, the government of Somalia has also made it its one of its key foundations on how we work together to respond to the different uh, issues that are happening in country. We will have this initial part to talk about the topic, to reflect, to rethink, and to see where localization is being understood, uh, where it's being integrated, and ultimately where the priorities and opportunities are. Let me not waste anyone's time and introduce the steam panel that I have with me. To my left, I have Mr. Abdullah Hamoud, State Minister from the Office of the Prime Minister. Uh, we have next to him, His Excellency, Minister Hamza Saeed Hamza, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management. To his left, we have Dr. Hani al Chairman of the World Humanitarian Forum and Chairman of the Muslim Charities in the UK. And to his left, we have Ms. Amina Haji Ernest, Founder and Chairman of the Somalia, of Save Somali Women and Children. Really, really important to have this discussion. Let me have opening remarks from His Excellency Wazir Hamid. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nasser, for the warm welcome. Uh, I would like to first and foremost uh, thank the uh, Minister of uh, Humanitarian, Mr. Hamza, who, who, I, who has invited me today, and Dr. Hani for being in with issue. I know you've been to Johar the other day with uh, some of my uh, office works. Also, I would like to welcome uh, most of you uh, who are. Uh, engaged in supporting Somalia in various aspects, whether it be uh, disaster management, whether it be uh, women and children, and so on and so forth. So my, my speech is not very long, uh, just to confirm what my sister Nasra has just said, in terms of localizing uh, the humanitarian aspects, and ensuring that locals take ownership of uh, delivering uh, some of the first-hand humanitarian issues. So I welcome the initiative and we will be supporting from point of office as well as point of our government to ensure that uh, actually mm -hmm. happens. And we welcome uh, initiatives of uh, Minister Hamza and humanitarian department, uh, the efforts that has been made lately, uh, one of which is making sure that this re uh, recurring drought uh, and flooding uh, at the same time uh, stops. That's going to be our major focus next year or so. So hopefully you will have a good day today for your uh, introduction and seminar, and we'll uh, wish you a, a, a blessed day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your Excellency Dr. Hamoud, State Minister of uh, Office of Prime Minister, Dr. Hani uh, al -Banna. Uh, Dr. Amina and uh, Dr. Nasra, good morning. good morning, and a uh, special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure today to participate in this very important uh, consultation workshop on the World Humanitarian Action Forum. It is indeed a great platform to discuss the localization agenda and other humanitarian commitment in the Somalia context. In May 2016, exactly three years ago, the Grand Bargain agreed at the World Humanitarian Summit 
to promote localization by committing donors and aid organizations to allocate global humanitarian funding by at least 25% to local humanitarian response by 2020. Key element in the humanitarian discussions were to remove barriers to partnership and provide a multi-year funding for in institutional uh, capacity to ensure continuity in humanitarian uh, response. We all know that in Somalia, our local humanitarian actors receive less than 2%. This means the commitment has never been uh, capitalized to date. Ladies and gentlemen, Somalia is highly vulnerable to recurrent natural and climate-induced disasters, instability, civil conflict, and other emergency, which is increasing both in frequency and severity. For almost close to 30 years, Somalia remained being the top in the list of humanitarian aid receiving countries in the world and continued to face challenges related to disasters and increased risk. These challenges require increased international cooperation, real partnership, and support to allow for the implementation of the world humanitarian commitment as well as the implementation of Sendai framework to invest in the disaster risk reduction. One dollar invested in disaster risk reduction saves seven dollars in response. Locally led response have a critical advantage including better access uh, and the deeper connections uh, with the affected local communities. Local actors have greater understanding of uh, local structure and relevant uh, geopolitical and cultural contexts. They enjoy better accessibility, better value for money, cost reduction, sustainability, and most importantly, locally owned uh, and implement implemented programs created to sense uh, of ownership among local communities who ultimately contribute to the sustainability of any given project because they have uh, a clearer view of what needs to be done in response to a crisis of a during recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, while calling for more direct funding, I would like to take this opportunity to make a clear for all humanitarian partners that business is and will not be an unusual under this government. The federal government of Somalia is a series about the optimum use of resources in a comfortable, uh, coherent, and transparent manner for all levels within the humanitarian systems. Somalia faces specific challenges and deserve a particular attention in promoting the localization agenda. Genuine cooperation between international humanitarian actors and local national actors will strengthen and ensure durable partnership. Such partnership will enable has achieved the Sendai framework priority in disaster risk reduction. Therefore, humanitarian partners will invest in advance of future crises, both in the functional and operational capacity on our government institutions, as well as closely working with the local NGOs and the civil society actors to ensure that we can respond to any suddenly, sudden influx of emergencies and beyond. Finally, I want to emphasize the importance to promote a quality humanitarian response that respect strong, sustainable, relevant programs with nurturing and supporting the role of our government and local actors. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, uh, Sassama uh, Rasulullah. Your Excellencies, may Allah bless you coming Saturday's holiday. And uh, Ladyship, thank you for coming. Um, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm very happy and honored to come to Somalia. I was here last year. I went to Hergesa to see the flooding, to see the uh, how much we waste water every year into the ocean because we cannot capture it. We cannot build sand dams or hafira or birka 
and others to keep this huge amount of water. So I'm very happy to be with you here today. And we, I hope to come back again and again and again and you give me the citizenship. That's right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> you, you're already citizen. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. And uh, as His Excellency was talking about localization, localization should not be only, only treated as just an outcome. It's a practical, effective outcome where the two partners are equal, the international and the national, at equal footage. Don't ever bend your back for the funding or bend your head for the funding because you are the people who have the know-how and you know the know-how and without the know-how nobody can spend their money in a country like Somalia or any other country it's number one the localization is very important on equal footage of partnership I have the right you have the right as a donor it's number one number two outcome from the WHS summit in 2016 in Istanbul was leaving no one behind. No one marginalized group, different groups, ethnic groups, religious groups, cultural groups, leaving no one behind. Should be all inclusive, tribal, whatever it is. We should be including everyone. To be it's still very sad to see out of the 25% have been decided on in 2016, only 10% reached the local community, unfortunately. Number three, for you as civil society organization, build a partnership with the government and with the businesses. It has to be a tripartite partnership. You help the government because you have the information and you have the access, sometimes faster than the government. Okay? And you help the private business because they have to respect you and trust you in how to spend their money. Yes, number two. And nowadays, no organization can work alone. Even the big ones, if they are multi-billion dollar organization, they cannot work alone. They have to work with the government as well as the civil society organization which you represent. Governance is an incredibly important issue. Governance, accountability, transparency, knowing the humanitarian standard, all these are very, very important to be able to see that the money will go as fast as we can to the needy people in this area. Okay. Empowerment. Empowerment of women. I know that the Somali women are very strong. Is that right? Very, very strong. Very strong. Very strong. Stronger than men. She's stronger than men. <laughs> no, no, <they're> not <laughs> stronger. No, no, you are very strong. Oh, I can feel the heat of the, of the wave of the strength. Yeah, if they hear that. No, but if you look at me, you knock me down. <laughs> so empowerment of women and youth, involving youth. We don't want youth to be picked up by radical groups or other groups. So we have to put them on the agenda, as a top priority on the agenda, to empower women and youth. And these are some of the aims and objective of humanitarian forum, which we were planning to have after the World Humanitarian Summit. We knew World Humanitarian Summit would come uh, three years ago, and to be very honestly, I knew that it's not going to be another World Humanitarian Summit. That's why we planned our first WAF, World Action Humanitarian Forum, in 2017, knowing that actually to follow up the recommendation of World Humanitarian Summit, knowing and believing that there's not going to be another World Humanitarian Summit, again, because they have been asking many, many senior official United Nations, when is the next World Humanitarian Summit? They said, okay, fine, what, where, how, and that's it. So today, it is your call to put your view, your concern, and your vision to guide us, because without you, we cannot proceed forward. Thank you very much. Well, may Allah bless you. Jazakumullah khair. Well, all the best for you the rest of the day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Good morning, everybody. And, and thank you, uh, Dr. And Hane. You mentioned that Somali women are very great, but we great are great and, <laughs> great and strong, but we, we don't want that. We are not greater and stronger than our men. If they hear that, you know. So thank you. My name is Mama Amina. Mama Amina is my humanitarian name. After having served 30 years with humanitarian, you know, in activities, I take my that name, Mama Amina. So in, I just wanted to tell you brief about SSWC, and then I will come, you know, in the localization and that issues. You know, save some. I think that most of the people they know save some women and children. It's a woman-led organization. The reason which I wanted to underline is SSWC is founded 1992. From that day, we are on board, and you know. The leadership is in the hands of God, but in the hands of women. Woman it, shows, uh, uh, <laughs> it shows that, you know, uh, and our fish, we have fish and mission, you know, all comes to empower women and, and, and young girls and mothers. When you <coughs> empower women and, and you empower the whole family. That's right. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Hani, he mentioned that the, the, the youth that they need to create window of opportunity. You cannot create any opportunity unless you empower the mother. The reason which we wanted to empower the mother is, is to create atmosphere for the young youth to not join, you know, the, uh, to not spoil, because mother is the one who, who, who safeguard the family. I just want to say something about the humanitarian dignity. When we are working with our people, when you become IDP, you know, in 1991, I became IDP in my own country. So it, you know, it means you are not uh, the, the, the president, the minister, the doctor, everyone can be immediately IDP. So what we need is to create atmosphere whereby people can, you know, get their dignity. When we are giving water, for example, we have to give clean water to IDPs. We have to give, you know, a, a, a ch clean chirganis. We have to construct a shelter whereby people, you know, a family can live. Because, you know, in IDP camps, you can get, when you go there, you can see a family, a mother-in-law, father-in-law, children, father, mother, they are living in very small hut. Yeah. So what we need is, you know, they need to live separate places. They need to have uh, uh, latrines. Latrines has to be separate into men and women. So what we are loving is the IDP people to get, you know, the dignity which they deserve because they are human beings. I myself, I become IDP under the three, we, you know, there is a long history which, you know, uh, uh, I, I received 1991 under the three of, 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 of Palat. You know, I became IDP. When I became IDP, I got my period under that three. There is no another alternative. I cannot stand up. My, my family, they are waiting, Mama Amina, to stand, and th that, that time I was very young lady, to stand and cook, and I can't. I can't, there is no latrine, there is no water, there is no, uh, the means of the life. So I go that side, then I use my scarf. That's where I started creating dignity kit for women. Because I realized it, beside the food, the water, the medicine, there is a need, the woman, special. Uh, special need for women. So what came to my mind was, you know, maybe the next, next three, there is a woman who is getting bad, who can, who can give her protection, how she can, uh, 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 how she can gain her dignity. There is another in, 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 in dig dignity which IDBs need. You know, in IDB camps, there is no protection. There is no proper protection. So when they get raping or all those things, what we realize is, you know, what I'm talking about is, the long experience which I received working with the IDP people. You know, 
What we need if if man came to my place and raped me, people complaining me, you know that she is being raped. No, the fault is not mine. I don't have protection. So to get regain, we have to empower. As long as you are empowered, people they don't care what you where you come from. So we realize that these young ladies need to, in order to regain their dignity, we have to empower them. Because when we empower them, they can be, you know, a member, they regain their dignity. When it comes to localization, you know, uh, all those years we have been working with the international humanitarian community, and we thank, we thank, they support us. But we, we, we still have complained. You know, in Istanbul summit, I was, you know, representing Somali civil society. We, you know, it was 25% to be localization. <laughs> but to be honest, there is a lot of checkpoints when it comes to receiving fund as a local capacity. You don't do this, don't do this. So what we need is, alhamdulillah, we have an active government. So what we need is the, our government to be on board. You know, a humanitarian summit, we have to come together. I'm not saying when the organization is not capable to get money, but I'm saying we have to correct it. We have to empower. We have to, you know, to come in a position whereby we can be equal, yes. equal with the international, because they are human beings and we are human beings. So we have to, if there is something missing from local organization, we have to, to fill that gap. But we cannot keep saying, no, 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 we don't do this, you know, that we have. The checkpoints have to be removed once and for all. And, and I thank to, to the international community and Hania and our ministers, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll continue speaking in English, and I apologize if I do so because we have a guest. <coughs> uh, thank you, Nasra. Um, the roadmaps um, have started um, early on when the government came to be, and we recognize that unless we take ownership of how we manage the country, uh, we will not be uh, moving forward. And, uh, and Somalia, if you remember, the Somali Partnership Forums, where the president attends, there's always a co-chair with, with the president, or so someone else sits with it. So the steering wheel, Somalia's steering wheel, has always been held with us uh, by someone else. So the thinking was that we need to be uh, actually thinking of stopping that. And uh, if we have to localize things, ownership has to be Somali, and Somali-led and Somali thinking. And the roadmaps uh, came to be uh, for in response to projects and, 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 and things that have been done for you uh, outside your country has been imported to you and you just you have to work alongside. What we said was, uh, fine is good and now uh, we, we recognize and we are thankful uh, to international partners, but we cannot longer do that. We'll have to have our own pr uh, priorities. So the priority of Somalia is led by the government, but led by the Somali people, and then the international community has to work along and, uh, and, uh, alongside with us rather than actually led by us, by the internationals. So the roadmaps came to be in that, in that sense. Uh, so we have an economic roadmap, uh, we have a social services, so social delivery services uh, roadmap, we have a justice and uh, security roadmap, and we have inter a inclusive politics roadmap. And all this has been driven by the ministries, priorities, what the ministers see as their priority for the next term, for the, for the term that they hold in office and beyond. It's not just us finishing off, but 
has to be something that we can lock in for next government to come in and they can continue from there and say, these are Somali priorities. So it has been a long struggle. Uh, there's been a lot of challenges. And as the Turanis early on said, obviously this is international communities. This is how they see fit and, and they run their businesses. And it allows to come to challenge that and say that status quo cannot be accepted lo any longer. We need to be uh, thinking differently. Hence why the partnership, uh, that Tohani spoke about it, the 25% that's been agreed, that is you guys to sort of challenge the people that you work with, alongside with uh, uh, Nasra and her team, to say this is what we agree. And uh, these people are more informed in about what happens in Somalia, what happens in rural Somalia. You know more than uh, the, the internationals. You need to be driving. But two things, and I, and, I, and, I, and I got it from there. So the funding is one, one part that you know in what is being funded, uh, and you do not accept that you've been given a subsidy of less than what you deserve to, to manage. That's one thing uh, you, need, you need to be done. The other one is the trust that you need to build. Obviously, for you to be uh, handed over millions of dollars to manage, you need to show accountability. You need to show trustworthy. You need to build that trust, not only with internationals, but also your local businesses, with your government. <coughs> so we can say, you know, that, that NGO, that's a very good NGO. We know it. The amount of take, uh, the money they, they receive, uh, taking away the, 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 the expenses, they actually put back every penny they, they receive back to the community, whichever project it is. So building trust is very, very important. And I, uh, I uh, commend uh, Lady Amina here on uh, what she has gone through on the last 30 years. And if one, when she tells you that story, it actually brings you home everything that we're talking about. It is you, it is your mother, it is your sister, it is your uh, wife. So you cannot just uh, uh, keep your eyes closed or mismanage the funding that has been given to you in a private manner. That cannot happen. So you need to build that trust. When you build that trust, your government will be behind you to support you to get the 25% and more of the funding that you deserve to manage. Thank you. Very, um, Your Excellency, thank you. Very powerful words. I think for the NGO community, we often see ourselves as challenging, or rather I should say on, uh, on, from the NGOs and civil society side, we see ourselves as challenging, keep a government account. But I think if it's a true partnership, it also works the other way around. The challenge here uh, has been set by this government in the office of the Prime Minister. We've been complaining for a long time. Where is the vision? Where is the leadership? We have it now, and I think now it's our turn as NGOs, civil society, to figure out how we link into these national plans, into these national strategies. It will only work as a true partnership if we work together and challenge each other. It's not just one way. So, Wasid uh, Hamoud, I think to me those words are going to stay with me for a very long time because there, there is a there is a very uh, natural ownership that can happen on both sides. So thank you for that challenge. Thank you for the trust. And also thank you for paving and doing your role to link up with our own strategies. Minister Hamza, we've talked a lot about the humanitarian affairs of, of this country. We've talked a lot even before as diaspora from the US. I think it's really important to understand why this drought, why this humanitarian crisis is a little bit different. I see a, a different imperative from your office, and one I think for all of us, both UN and NGOs, we're happy to see. Uh, we have finally a drought response plan, I understand, from your office. And I think for us, that's really, really important. How can we help? How do we link to your priorities, to your vision? Thank you, Nasser. We're talking about the, one of the youngest ministers in the Somali history. <laughs> Yeah, two years old. Uh, we started from the scratch. Yeah, year ago we are now this stage. You can stand in front of the people, talk about humanitarian. But today, I mean, uh, we can challenge many things, and that is very important. That was one of my agenda to work close with the NGOs, special empower the local NGOs in a transparent way. That is that my first stage was when I came there to my office. I had the audit in my office. I couldn't even answer the question. Removing the, I mean, all those, uh, that thing from the society will help to deliver. We need to collaborate. That is more important things. And to empower the gender female. And no one is left behind. Because we are serving the same people. We are working for the same country for a better Somalia. 
and that is very important. Uh, consultation is very important in, the, in this business. Sitting was the faces because this is a challenge that everyone is facing in this country. Yeah, thank you. Let me come to you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you so much for that. I think um, our consultations have been increasing, uh, Minister Hamza, and I think we have to keep that as part and parcel of localization. Many people uh, will, will see localization just about money, but there's a core aspect of brand bargain localization, and it's participation. Everyone has to feel like they can participate in their decision making, in the discussions, and ultimately in the delivery of aid. So uh, very, very important core belief that you've just uh, announced. Thank you so much. Dr. Hani, yeah. you've been in country, yes, before and currently. Mm -hmm. What did you see? Is there something that you saw in your visit in the last uh, few days from the community? Because it's not just a business about NGOs and government. It's also partly, and I would say a large part, about community. Uh, I think that the community is ready to help and to work. They are very resourceful, but they need guidance. And this is where we need the government, as well as yourself, a civil society organization, as well as the international community to trust the community. Let me, because I put some points uh, anticipating your question. Uh, the His Excellency, the Minister, talk about trust. That's number one. Number two is respect. Respect is a vital issue in dealing with the community. Respect and dignity. The dignity which is Sister Amina was talking about dignity as a woman, dignity as a young man, dignity as an elderly, dignity as a poor man. Why? Because who owns our work? This is the community. And who are the servants? Are you and myself. So when we look at this issue of working with community, we are the servants. And they are the owner of our organization. We spend their money on our offices, on our salaries. This is something extremely important for any civil society organization. It's not your money. Even if the money is coming from abroad, it is the money of those poor people. So we have to realize the servant and the owner uh, equation. My dream, can I talk politically? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Hello. You are not politician, huh? Yes. <laughs> Humanitarian is out of the politics. Yeah. <laughs> it's to have a, a national long term strategy between all the political parties. To agree about Somalia, not about my political party or your political party or her political party. And this not because we need to build the institution. The state institution, no government and no nation will be able to, will be stable without having a proper state institution. And if all the political party has to sit down, tribal leader has to sit down, civil society has to sit down to draw a roadmap for the strategy of the coming 10 or 20 years. Because Somalia, Bismillah, mashallah, is an extremely rich country. And it could be the richest in the region. But we have to do it through a national strategy built by different political parties, tribal leaders, and civil society organizations to sit down together and make this roadmap for the coming 10 or 20 years to build the state and institution to help any government. Sometimes the government can go over the red line. So this state institution will stop them back. And you can stop them back. So my dream, if I'm allowed to dream, while I'm, while, while I'm awake. Yeah, you can. I do want to work, mm -hmm. is to look at this long-term strategy over the coming 10, 20 years, which could be adopted by all the different political groups, whether this political group in the office, or this political group in the office, or this political group in the office, and adopted also by the tribal leaders in the country. Thank you. Part and parcel of what we do. But I know as NGOs, we tend to stay away from politics. We 
say we are neutral, we are independent, we follow, we follow the principles of humanitarian values, but I think every now and then in this world that we're in, it is brave to think through where the linkages are. Yeah. You, yes. you are as a wife and as a mother, well, draw it. the politics at home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you for that. I think um, that, that is not something we, we often forget. Um, Lady Amina, Mama Amina, Mama Amina. Um, I have uh, worked with you for a very long time. You are somebody who I consider not only a leader, but okay. also a mentor. For those of you who don't know, the NGO Consortium is 100 plus organizations. We are as good as our membership. And to me, the, the service, the support that Somalia's uh, safe Somali women and children have put into the NGO Consortium, your advocacy, uh, you are there at every turn. You sit at the steering committee of the NGO Consortium, making sure that our vision, our accountability, our trust, our community are, are something we have to protect. There's not many organizations I have seen in civil society who are as active on advocacy as you are. Why, why does SSWC do this? Where you, do, is it about funding? Or is it that you see advocacy as a clear part where your voice matters, the voice of those women matters? Why is advocacy so important to you? Thank you. Thank you, Nasra. And we, we, you know, we start from bottom up. So and b before the international community came to our country, you know, <coughs> when the government collapsed, you know, everything collapsed. So we, as a Somali young ladies, that time we were very young ladies. No, no, my, 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 my. So we came together and realized, you know, that's uh, what I think that you, that time we were very young, but the, the rule was military government. We were under the military government. That military government provided us everything. The, the government was advocacy, administration, everything. But when you, the, the light sh shut down, you know, you have to stand up yourself. So we come together and say, we need a way forward. So from there we started, you know, advocacy. After that, you know, we get, you know, communication with the, the, the UNISOM come to us. So, you know, and to lobby the advocacy and to have that, you know, capacity, situation forced us first. But we succeed when we come into. And the other thing, you know, look, when you work with your local people, local people is when something happened, you know, disasters, man-made or natural disaster, you know, people are coming to you as a leader, as a, you know, intellectual, as a mother, as, so from there, you know more, more about, you know, rather than international community. And they cannot wait. When, if something happened, we can organize ourselves, you know, collect clothes or food in our houses. So. When you are, you know, waiting that long process of preparing proposal, you know, it's more easier to lobby and to to understand. And so many people, you know, we have culturally and and and, and fundraising, culturally fundraising. It calls Karan, you know. We have, you know, if you need something, we come together, and no matter which clan you belong, no matter where you came, but and. And culturally, we used to have that. So from there, we start, we use our natural, you know, traditional resources. We we, we have been used before before the civil war, and we want to teach our you know young generation that we need you know. Every when we come together, you can have if you have, if you have fun, you don't need you don't need to to to. Uh, you know, international community to come to you. They, come, they can come to you, but you can make your, uh, you know, first step to, to support your people. So that makes, you know, I mean, you know, when I came, if I get three people, I told them something. This advocacy, you know, if, you know, three people, and I told them, listen to me, you are young. So advocacy is uh, at all level. Nowadays, you know, I tell people, you know, to be, you know, Somali, to be united, it helps you, you know, because you know, when we came from, you know, humanitarian and, and that, uh, you know, if you don't get, teach your young generation, you know, uh, Hamid and the two ministers and myself, while we were educating, there was civic education. We have civic education in our classes. There's no civic education, this new generation. 
So we are the one who know civil education. So lobbying is at all level and advocacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, I think, uh, yeah, we can always count on you, your advocacy, your representation. And it's not just here. I mean, those of you who are in the audience, you have heard and you know both Mama Amina, Mama Asha, but also Halima Adam, who's also uh, chairman, uh, serves in the chairmanship of the World Humanitarian Action Forum. She could not be able to make it. We thank her for her work. But I think, again, the SSWC model of working, the coalition, the advocacy is deep, not only in this country, but also around the world. We get to influence the agenda of localization broadly in the globe. I want to thank um, everyone on this panel. I want to thank uh, Your Excellencies, Hamoud, Wazir Hamza, Dr. Bani, uh, Mama Amina. Thank you so much for your kindness to come and participate in this discussion with us. Thank you as well for the openness and the honesty with which you spoke. For us as NGO civil society, the work is always relevant. The work that we have to do in localization is right now. It's no longer about just only funding. It's going to be about decision making, community empowerment. And ultimately, as we say every time I see it on the tables, we are working ourselves out of a job. Because the community has to be there, local leadership has to be there. The recommendations, just to summarize, the recommendations from this esteemed panelist is clear. Uh, we've got to build trust. We have to mandate empowerment. And ultimately, we have to centralize dignity in how we respond, how we partner, and how we work together. Um, very important you heard from our, uh, our excellent uh, ministers from the government on local leadership and what it means at a technical level. Thank you so much, Wilson uh, Hamza. But also what it means for a national planning beyond politics in terms of the roadmaps and how we link into those roadmaps in the four areas that Wilson Hamza has also provided for us. It is our job to link. It's not always our job just to yell. It's our job to make the linkages. It is our job to continue to think about what Mama Amina has told us about the community and the very personal stories that are going to impact how we design our programs. I think right now, uh, help me give a warm round of applause to this esteemed panelist.